Welcome in the Airflow 2.0 series, where you are going to discover the new awesome features of Airflow 2.0. My name is Mark Lomarty, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer, and I'm super excited to show you this new feature because I truly think that this one is actually the biggest and most important new feature of Airflow 2.0. And by the way, if you use Airflow in production, that's why you should definitely upgrade your Airflow version to Airflow 2.0. This new feature is the scheduler in HA. Not only now the scheduler is highly available, which means you are able to run multiple schedulers at the same time, but also the performances have been so much improved that right now running tasks is amazingly fast. But before moving forward, let me show you how it was with Airflow 1.10.x. Let's say you are running Airflow in production. A typical architecture that you might have is two web servers, as well as an instance corresponding to the Metastore and one instance corresponding to the scheduler. Obviously, you will interact with the user interface of Airflow and when you will trigger your data pipelines, some requests will be sent to the Metastore and some others to the scheduler. Now, I have a question for you. What happens if the scheduler is not available anymore? If the scheduler goes down? Yes, as you can imagine, you will end up with a lot of troubles. Indeed, if the scheduler is not available anymore, you are not able to trigger any more tasks. Basically, your Airflow instance is stuck and this is a big issue since Airflow is your orchestrator and so other tools could be impacted by that. Even your teams or your customers won't be able to get their data in time. In order to fix this big issue, now in Airflow 2.0, you are able to run multiple schedulers at the same time, which means the scheduler is highly available. Let me show you what does it mean. Well, first you will still have your multiple web servers running in parallel, as it was already the case in Airflow 1.10.x, and you have your Metastore. But then, instead of having one instance of the scheduler, you will have multiple scheduler instances. For example, here, scheduler 1 and scheduler 2. Now, what happens if the scheduler 1 goes down? Well, you will still be able to schedule new tasks, new data pipelines in Airflow, as the second scheduler will be still up and running. At the end, in Airflow 2.0, you have no more single point of failures, which is extremely important if you use it in production. The fact that the scheduler is highly available brings so many benefits. And the first one is the scalability. Indeed, as you can run as many schedulers as you want, in theory, you can run as many tasks as you want as well. Also, the latency between the execution of your task has been so dramatically reduced. As you will see in Airflow 2.0, running your tasks is blazingly fast. This is really important if you have use cases where you want to run your data pipelines and so your tasks every minute. In that case, Airflow 2.0 is just a requirement. All right, before moving to the practice, I would like to talk about two more things. And the first one is, if you really want to make your Airflow instance highly available, you have to make sure that your web server instances and your scheduler instances are not running all on the same nodes. You should have different nodes, for example here, node 1 and node 2, where you will have an instance of your web server and an instance of your scheduler running in node 1, and another instance of your web server and another instance of your scheduler running in node 2. By doing this, if the node 1 goes down, you will still have the other node with the web server and the scheduler of Airflow running. One thing you have to keep in mind is that by increasing the number of schedulers, you increase the number of connections made to your Metastore as well. So be careful with that as you can increase the load of your Metastore and you have to find a way to deal with that, which can be PG Bouncer, for example, if you use Postgres. Last but not least, in order to execute your tasks faster, a new mechanism has been implemented in Airflow 2.0, which is the fast follow mechanism. But before showing you this new feature, let me show you how it was in Airflow 1.10.x. So basically, you will have those components with the scheduler, the queue, the metastore, and the executor. Let's say you want to execute a task. Well, first, that task has the status scheduled. Then the scheduler sends the task to the queue, and the task has the status queued. Next, the executor pulls the task from the queue, and the task is marked with the status running. Next, as soon as the task is completed, the executor updates the Metastore with the new status of the task. Finally, the scheduler looks if there is other tasks to execute in your data pipeline and the same process 
goes over and over until there is no more tasks to execute. Now we have seen how it worked with airflow1.10.x, let's discover how your tasks are executed with the fast follow mechanism that has been implemented in airflow2.0. So let's imagine that your task has been already scheduled, pushed into the queue, and pulled by the executor in order to execute it. What you will have is the current task with the status running. Now, as soon as the task is completed, instead of checking the next task to execute from the scheduler, the executor is in charge of checking if there is any direct downstream task to execute. And this is the fast follow mechanism. If there is a direct downstream task to execute, that task is marked with the status scheduled, skipping the first step of scheduling the task from the scheduler and now the task is directly pushed into the queue so that the executor can pull it to execute it. So really, the goal of the fast follow mechanism is to reduce the latency between the execution of your tasks within the same data pipeline. All right, now we have seen all the improvements and benefits of the scheduler in Airflow 2.0. Let's discover it in practice. At this point, if you want to follow what I'm going to show you on your computer, you absolutely need to click on the link in the description below and you will land on this beautiful page. From there, the first thing you need to do is to install the Astronomer CLI. If you are on Linux, please just copy that instruction and execute it on your terminal. If you are on Windows, you need to follow that link in order to install the Astronomer CLI. If you are wondering why we use the Astronomer CLI, it is the fastest and easiest way to set up and run Airflow 2.0 locally. Once you have installed the Astronomer CLI, you are ready to move on. And the first thing we need to do is to create a new folder. So go to your terminal and type mkdir airflow-2 like that and go into that folder. Next, execute the command astro init in order to initialize the development environment. Finally, open your code editor in the folder like that and we are ready to move on. From the practice part, what I want to show you is how fast it is to execute your tasks in Airflow 2.0, but also what happens if you have multiple schedulers running and one of the schedulers goes down. But before showing you that, I would like to show you how it was with Airflow 1.10.x. To do this, go to the instructions and copy the following line right there. Then open the file docker file and paste the line. Save the file, then from the terminal, execute the command astro d start in order to start Airflow. Once Airflow is running, go back to your web browser, open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080, then admin admin, and you land on this page. From there, as usual, click on the toggle right there in order to start scheduling the DAG, example underscore DAG. Then click on example underscore DAG. And as you can see, the tasks are being executed. Now, what happens if the scheduler goes down? Well, go back to your terminal and type astro DPS, then docker kill and the scheduler. Paste it, enter, and go back to the Airflow UI. Refresh the page. As you can see, some other tasks have been successfully executed. Let's refresh again. And now, as you can see, your Airflow instance is stuck. You are not able to execute tasks anymore and you get this message right there indicating that actually you didn't receive any heartbeat from your scheduler. Again, as you can imagine, this issue is extremely critical as Airflow is your orchestrator and that means all of the data that you should be able to store and uh, send to the different teams of your company won't be available in time. So now we have seen the problem with Airflow 1.10.x, let's discover the solution with the new scheduler in Airflow 2.0. First, go back to your terminal and type astro d kill in order to stop Airflow. Then go back to the instructions and let's copy the following code right there, like that. Then go back to your code editor and create a new file called docker-compose.override.yaml and paste the code. Save the file. If you are wondering what this code does, well, it allows us to add a new scheduler in the default setup of the Astronomer CLI to run Airflow. 
That's what you can see here with scheduler-2. So basically we will have two schedulers running and we have to do this because there is no option available yet for the Astronomer CLI to add more schedulers. Next, go back to the instructions and copy the following line right there. Then open the file docker file and paste it there, like that. Save the file and type in the terminal as true the start in order to start airflow 2.0. Now airflow is running. If you type as true DPS, as you can see, we have two schedulers, scheduler underscore one and scheduler dash two underscore one. Next, go back to your web browser, open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080. Then admin admin and we land on the DAG view. As we did before, turn on the toggle of the DAG example underscore DAG then click on it. And as you can see, if you refresh the page, I'm pretty sure that you can already see how faster it is to run your tasks in Airflow 2.0. If you refresh the page again, as you can see, some other tasks have been successfully completed. So as you can see, the performances have been greatly improved. And if you have some data pipelines that you need to execute pretty fast, obviously this improvement is a requirement. Now we have seen how fast it is to execute your tasks, I would like to show you what happens if one of the schedulers goes down. So go back to your terminal and type docker kill with the scheduler underscore one. Like that. Type astro dps and as you can see now we have only one scheduler left. So let's go back to the Airflow UI, refresh the page, Refresh again. And at this point, we have to wait five minutes corresponding to the time taken by the scheduler to detect any tasks that are not managed by a scheduler anymore. All right, we are five minutes later. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, we are still able to execute tasks in Airflow. And we didn't get the message telling us that we haven't received heartbeats from the scheduler since a few minutes ago. All right, at this point, I'm gonna make a clear and explicit statement about Airflow 2.0. If you use Airflow in production, you have to upgrade your version of Airflow to Airflow 2.0. This is mandatory. With Airflow 2.0, you don't have any single point of failures. You are able to horizontally scale the scheduler, which means you can execute as many tasks as you want. And the latency between the execution of your tasks is blazingly fast. So again, trust me, if you use Airflow in production, you have to use the Airflow 2.0 version. So that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed what you have learned and see you for the next video.